the probability of having another huge earthquake in 40 years is 90%. Hi guys, it's Reset. In the previous video, I talked about 5 reasons why I miss Japan. But of course, Japan has a downside. So today, I'll talk about 5 things that I don't like about Japan. I'll explain them with a combination of objective facts and my personal experiences, so it should be very interesting. So before you forget, um, please subscribe and hopefully you're gonna enjoy it. Number one, earthquakes. Japan has benefits from nature with hot springs or beautiful mountains, but they come with non-negligible cost. What you may know is Japan has earthquakes, but you might not know is how often they happen, right? The answer is, it happens almost every day, at least somewhere in Japan. It's true that quite a few of them are too small to feel the shake. Actually, 10% of earthquakes in the world happened in Japan. And just a week ago, uh, there was a huge earthquake that hit Tohoku area, which is the northeast of Japan, where 2011 happened. That one was not as big as uh, 2011, but still it was quite disastrous. And the bad news is the government is estimating that the probability of having another huge earthquake as big as 2011 in 40 years is 90%, 9-0. Let me repeat. The probability of having another huge earthquake in 40 years is 90%, which is a lot, right? So if you're thinking about traveling to Japan, it's less likely that you're gonna experience it. But if you're thinking about moving to Japan, that's something you have to be very careful about. And the good news is, the damage caused by earthquakes in Japan is relatively smaller than what happens in other countries. What I mean by that is, for example, um, last year, do you remember, a huge earthquake hit Haiti. And in Haiti, 2,000 people died. And actually, what happened in Tokyo area last week is as big as that one, but only three people died. Of course, I feel very sorry for them, and I feel very sorry for their family, but still, the damage could have been even worse. You know what I mean. The reason why the damage is relatively smaller is that people are ready for it. One is, normally they have constant earthquake drills, and also, Buildings are more resistant to earthquakes, so that's why. Number two, hay fever. From mid-February to mid-April, what you can experience is not only beautiful cherry blossom called sakura, but also hay fever. 40% of Japanese people are suffering hay fever. It's, it doesn't kill us, but it's quite disastrous in a way that that can affect economy. It lowers workers' efficiency and because they have to they have to sneeze and blow their nose every minute. And it doesn't sound like a big deal, right? But Panasonic estimated that the Japanese economy loses two billion US dollars every day from an inefficiency of workers caused by hay fever. That's just one day, right? And it starts from February and ends around mid-April. So let's assume it's 60 days. And so two times 60 is 120. So 120 billion US dollars are the cost from hay fever. But why do we have hay fever in the first place? Most of them were caused by specific trees called hinoki or sugi in Japanese. And many of them were planted during 1960s. That's when Japan was experiencing rapid growth and those trees were very important as a resource for the industry because they grow faster than other trees and they were quite cheap. So we can say that now we are paying the cost for the prosperity in 20th century by blowing our nose and sneezing every minute. It's not worth it. Number three, uncomfortable summer. Japan has the worst combination of hot and humid summer. It can go over 35 degrees Celsius, which is 96 degrees Fahrenheit, very easily. But what matters is humidity. During summer, 
Once you go out, you will never make it home. I'm exaggerating obviously, but it's very uncomfortable. Let me compare Tokyo and London using humid comfortable levels. Let's look at London first. The more red, the more uncomfortable. Hmm. It doesn't look bad, right? So let's look at Tokyo. Ugh. It's uncomfortable, like a different level, right? And I love that they chose the word miserable as the word to describe how bad it is. But of course, like most housing have air conditioners. So as long as you stay in your room, you should be fine. Number four, cockroaches. Personally, I really hate them just because they are disgusting. They can be as big as like my full finger. That doesn't mean my full finger is very short though. Although they are very big, they can hide everywhere, like under the fridge or behind the desk or like everywhere. So that's very scary. When I live in the dormitory in Tokyo, I found them like a few times a month, very unfortunately. The ironic thing is that the more careful I am about them, the more likely that I can find them. Cause like I looked around so that I can make sure that like they are not there and I can find them. And there are two weapons against them. One is sleepers, another one is a pesticide. And they can work very well. If you go south of Japan, like Kyushu area or like Okinawa, um, you can find bigger version of cockroaches. And they are unnecessarily friendly to people. I want them to keep social distance with me at least like one mile or one kilometer. My grandma lived in the prefecture called Miyazaki, which is the southwest of Japan. And when I stayed at my grandma's house, and every night when I turn off the light, I can hear something was flying. So, and then when I turn on the light, I found them. Yeah, that was very creepy. And another interesting thing is that I found crabs walking around on the corridor in my grandma's house. And anyway, in Japan, there is only one prefecture where you would never find cockroaches. That is the north part of Japan called Hokkaido. I call it heaven during summer. Number five, paper culture. Japanese love physical paper. They don't eat paper, but they want to touch it. They want to feel it because that makes them feel less anxiety or I don't know, people might feel secure. Let me give you two examples. The first one is that if you go to Japan, you can easily find places where only cash is accepted. Near my dormitory in Tokyo, there was one grocery store that only accepted cash and that was very, very inconvenient. Now, uh, in Japan, only 30% of all the payment is done by cashless, like card or QR code. Whereas uh, in UK, the number is 70% and in South Korea, 96%. Japan is definitely far behind when it comes to cashless. Another example of Japanese people loving paper is the amount of paperwork we have to do. When I studied abroad in the US and UK, I didn't need to print out some documents. We just, we've done like paperwork all online. But in my university in Tokyo, I needed to submit a lot of documents by printing out and What's worse is we have to put our seal on it, which seems super weird for you guys maybe. And of course, it's phys their physical paper. We have to go to the office to submit it. It's just waste of time and like waste of energy. And also, it's not good for the environment, right? Where do paper come from? It's, it comes from trees, right? So we have to cut trees just to print some documents, which we can do online. And I found another fact that some of the paper comes from hinoki or sugi in Japanese, which is causing hay fever. Okay, so those are the five things that I don't really like about Japan. I'm pretty sure many of my Japanese friends would agree with me. But if you don't really care about them like that much, I can promise that Japan is the best country for you. 
Okay, so thank you so much for watching this video. Um, please subscribe, like the video, leave some comment, and share with your friends. Thank you so much. See you soon.